Hi, welcome to another lecture on deep learning. After last video where we have discussed the convolutional layer in detail, today we will piece together all the other ingredients that we need in order to build our first convolutional neural network. Let's get right into it by reviewing the convolutional layer. Remember in the convolutional layer, we take an input channel. So in this example, we only look at a single channel. Remember that images, for example, actually consist of three different channels, R, G, and B, which means that basically these additional channels would be a third dimension, but for now let's only consider single dimensional inputs. Similarly, we are dealing with sing single dimensional kernels, which means that we take the kernel in a convolutional layer to compute a cross correlation by placing the kernel over every possible window of the kernel size in the input, multiply the corresponding values in the input with the corresponding values in the kernel. So 0 times 0, 1 times 1, 3 times 2 and 4 times 3. Sum all of these products up to compute an output value. And then we move over the kernel, repeat the same operation and we do so over the whole input to create all the values of the output. In this example, we have a two-dimensional in input array of size 3 by 3, where the number of rows is NH, where H stands for height, and the number of columns equals NW, where W stands for width, and the kernel has a size of kernel height, kh, times kernel width, kw. Sometimes we also call the kernel filters. If we just apply the vanilla convolutional layer, then the size of the output of this channel is actually reduced. So the output is actually an array of in h minus the kernel height, so it's the height of the input minus the height of the kernel plus 1, and the width of the output equals the width of the input minus the width of the kernel plus 1. So a way to fix this reduction in size is to adjust the size of the output using padding of the input. How does padding work? Well, zero padding in this case means that we add zeros to the dimensions of the input. In this case, we add a column of zeros and a row of zeros in the beginning and in the end of a 3x3 three three input. And then we apply the convolution to this padded array, which means that we place our kernel to the top left. And of course, because we padded zeros here, we only look at this value of the input times the kernel. Now this value happens to be a zero, that's why we get a zero out. Then we move the kernel over to get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 times 3 equals 3. We move it over to get 0 plus 0 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 equals 8 and so on and so forth to compute the output. Now if again the input is a two-dimensional array of height and h and width and w and the kernel has a size of kh times kw, the kernel height and the kernel width, 
if we now add ph rows and pw columns of padding then we produce an output that has each of the dimensions increased by p the corresponding ph or pw so the output now has a shape of nh minus kh plus one as before but plus ph times nw minus kw plus one as before plus pw the second way to adjust the size of the output in a convolution is using a stride that is not equal to one so stride corresponds to the number of steps that we move the kernel either along the width dimension or the height dimension. So far all the examples were done with a stride of one across both dimensions. In this example we use a stride of sh equals three and sw equals two. So we move the kernel always two over along this dimension and three over along this dimension. So in this case, again, the first value of the output is computed by placing the kernel to the top left of the input array, meaning that we get again a zero. Then we move two to the right to compute one times two plus two times three and eight again. Now, because we have a stride of two, we can actually not move here anymore because we would need another column, which we don't have. That means that we only get two values in this dimension. And then we move down and our stride along the height dimension is three, which means that we move three down. So we can go from here to here to compute the next value, which is given by zero times zero plus six times one plus zero plus zero equals six. And then the next value is zero times seven plus eight times one plus zero plus zero equals eight. So this only yields four output values, reducing this originally three by three dimensional input tensor that is padded to a size of five by five to a two by two output. So the stride really, if we compute the size of the output, corresponds to dividing by the stride. So if you apply a stride of SH and SW, the size of the output has a height of nh the size of the input array minus kh the kernel height plus padding ph along the height dimension plus sh the stride among the height dimension divided again by the stride among the height dimension and that then is floored so we take the next smaller integer. Why do we have to do that? Well, this is exactly because if we sort of move over by the stride, we cannot do it if we don't have enough values here. So that's why sometimes we lose a fraction and we have to floor the size. And similarly for the width, the width is the floor of nw minus kw plus pw plus sw divided by sw the stride. So to do a little back of the envelope calculation, let's assume that we pad equal to the kernel size minus one. So ph equals kh minus one and pw equals kw minus one. As a result, these two numbers cancel and instead of having minus kh 
plus pH, we now have only a minus 1 in there again. So we have NH plus SH minus 1 divided by SH and NW plus SW minus 1. And let's make one additional simplification. If the input height and the input width are both divisible by the stride, then the size of the output is the size of the input divided by the stride along all dimensions, along the height dimension and along the width dimension. Now, why do we do this uh, little calculation? Because this is a very good rough estimate of the size of the output. Now, the kernel size and the padding, they are only additive factors, whereas the stride is a factor that we divide by. Thus, NH divided by SH is a good estimate of the output as SH. This division really div much dominates the addition or subtraction of these small constants KH and PH. So if you just quickly want to estimate the size of the output of a convolution, just take the input dimensions, divide by the stride. So let's summarize this part on padding and stride. Padding is one of the operations that can increase the height and the width of the output. And typically we do that using padding such that the output has exactly the same size as the input. In this case, we actually call it same padding. And the stride is a way to reduce the size of the output. And it reduces really the resolution by moving over the um, convolutional channel, not by one, but by stride many steps. And this introduces basically this division by the stride when we compute the size of the output. Now padding and stride are two ways that are used all over in convolution to adjust dimensionality of the data as we move the data along the convolutional neural network.